Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about the Georgia gubernatorial race in which President Trump seems to have some type of spiteful support for Stacey Abrams in this very competitive governor's race. Now, the reason why we are seeing this surface up is because President Trump has been unhappy with Governor Brian Kemp for the past year now, ever since Brian Kemp said that the election results were certified and that he would not personally overturn the election, that Donald Trump moved away from him, essentially saying that Brian Kemp is a rhino, was not someone who's willing to stand up to what Donald Trump viewed as widespread election fraud. President Trump continued to push this lie that the state of Georgia was rigged and stolen from him, enough so that he cut off ties with not only Governor Brian Kemp, but also Arizona Governor Doug Ducey. And we actually will be briefly talking about that because it provides some insight. This is not the first time President Trump seems to have been uh, inclined to choose a Democrat over a Republican in this situation. But obviously, when the actual election comes, no, I do not expect President Trump to one, campaign for Stacey Abrams. That is completely out of the ordinary. Or number two, fully end up endorsing her. But I do think that he will remain silent in the race and thus, consequently at least, help the Democratic Party and boost them in some of these states. So what exactly did Donald Trump say? Well, it was not a statement that would be simple enough to say, vote for Stacey Abrams. But what he did say is that referring to her, saying, quote, having her, I think, might be better than having your existing governor, if you want to know what I think. Stacey, would you like to take his place? It's okay with me. End quote. He made this comment at a rally in the state of Georgia, trying to push Brian Kemp further down and push up a potential primary challenger, going so far to the furthest extreme to say that he is okay with Stacey Abrams taking his spot, referring to Brian Kemp. And the reason why that is so entirely ironic is because in 2018, they actually faced off against each other, Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams. And this is actually what rose her to strong political clout across the nation. Stacey Abrams came within less than a point and a half of winning the Georgia governor election after a long-standing history of Democrats being absolutely obliterated on almost every single level. So when you take a look at the state of Georgia, when you take a look at the electoral history, Democrats never really came that close from 1990 onward. But Stacey Abrams nearly did it. And when she lost, she never conceded the election, which many Republicans raised as a double standard for what happened in the 2020 election, the Democratic Party's criticism of the Republican Party. Besides that point, I'm not going to speak on whether or not Stacey Abrams should have conceded the election or not. The point being that in the state of Georgia, you saw Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams fight off against each other. And President Trump actively campaigned for Brian Kemp in this state. It's it was very interesting. I think that Donald Trump so quickly turned on him and something that was very much an indicator of the overall lack of loyalty that we have seen from President Trump for many of these candidates, not necessarily trying to position this as an overall negative thing, just more so that President Trump really only works for candidates that are advantageous for him. And if he doesn't find Brian Kemp to be overall useful, he probably isn't going to support him the way that Brian Kemp would want. And that's exactly what's happening here. Despite the fact that President Trump has many speeches is praising Brian Kemp, has many has held many rallies boosting the Republican Party's chances and Brian Kemp's chances of winning in the state of Georgia. All of that is neglected when you take a look at the 2020 election results. Because President Trump personally feels as if the state of Georgia was stolen from him and that Brian Kemp is refusing to overturn the election results, essentially refusing the, uh, the question of President Trump whether or not Brian Kemp could do it, it just seems to Donald Trump that Brian Kemp did not do it simply because he didn't want to, that he was ultimately against President Trump. And Brian Kemp earned this title of what is called a rhino, a Republican in name only. But the problem is, for Donald Trump with this type of... Uh, endorsement potentially of Stacey Abrams is that it makes him seem sort of like a rhino. Can you imagine any other type of Republican going out into the media saying that they would likely support a Democrat? For instance, referring to the most polarizing one amongst Georgia Democrats, Stacey Abrams, saying that they would likely support her over the incumbent Republican governor. If it wasn't President Trump, if this had been any other Republican, you cannot deny they would have been vilified by the right-wing media and possibly vilified even by all mainstream media sources simply because it is very much out of the ordinary, which is why I'm covering it today. President Trump is making this preposterous claim that he could actually end up endorsing Stacey Abrams, and it just comes out of absolutely nowhere. 
it seems as if President Trump has not given up the 2020 election, has not given up his revenge tour, as was put earlier on in the year, that President Trump would be visiting a number of states and ensuring that uh, the Republicans that voted for impeachment, the Republicans that voted to convict, and the Republicans that refused, in his mind, to overturn the election results, Doug Ducey and Brian Kemp, will suffer for what they did. And like I said in the beginning of the video, Doug Ducey is a perfect example of this happening because in the state of Arizona, there is also a competitive race. The governor's race is competitive, but Doug Ducey is a two-term governor and cannot run for United States, uh, sorry, for Arizona governor again, but he can run for United States Senate. And currently I have Arizona in the tilt Democratic column, meaning I expect it to be decided by less than 1%. But the point is in Arizona that Doug Ducey was a shoe in longly viewed as a very good candidate for the GOP until Donald Trump came along. Donald Trump crucified Doug Ducey on the, on, uh, the internet using Twitter, Instagram, whatever it might be, using every medium to attack him, especially through the mainstream media and through the press. And thus, Donald Trump sent out a statement, not necessarily a statement, spoke to some of his closest advisors, and this was leaked to the Daily Beast that Donald Trump was actually considering endorsing a Democrat. For instance, this would be Mark Kelly against Doug Ducey if Doug Ducey decides to run for Arizona governor, sorry, Arizona Senate. So what Donald Trump essentially was supposedly saying, and I think that this is true now knowing what he has said in the state of Georgia, and I did think it was true at the time because it absolutely follows through with the way that Donald Trump has acted over the past couple of months. But the fact is that Donald Trump held this over the head of Doug Ducey to a point where now Doug Ducey is not even running for Arizona Senate anymore. Uh, and he seemed to be positioned well for it. He was very popular across the state. He won by 14 points in a blue wave year in the same year, actually, that Arizona flipped to the Democratic Party on the House level and on the Senate level. So Doug Ducey was this one candidate who truly could have had the upper hand over Mark Kelly, and Donald Trump pushed him away and said, you will not even get through that primary if I have anything to say about it. Enough so that even if you do make it through that primary, I am considering endorsing a Democrat. And it also is something to point out that if something is released to the press by members of an inside circle, typically speaking, it is the uh, inside circle's most prominent member, in this case being Donald Trump. It's their way of testing the waters with the media. Allowing something to quote unquote leak out allows for media response to something that you could claim is not true whatsoever. I think this was certainly the first true test. And now we are seeing it happening in full force where President Trump is going out to rallies saying things along this line, along the lines of Stacey Abrams would be better than a rhino. You know, this actually was indicated, hinted at back in January of 2021 when Donald Trump was campaigning for the Republican candidates there, when Donald Trump sort of referred to Brian Kemp as a rhino multiple times and then went on to continue and just essentially double down on that rhino message and then say that it wouldn't be so bad if Doug Ducey was voted out of office. Obviously, a primary challenger is what Donald Trump is looking for. But then he also said, what is the difference between Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp? What is the point of having a Republican governor if they aren't going to work with you? If Donald Trump truly thought he lost the election unfairly and that Joe Biden had stolen the state of Georgia, it makes sense that he would feel betrayed. I do not think personally that Donald Trump thinks he lost the election unfairly. I think that he's just trying to boost his rhetoric. This is something that we knew would happen. Hillary Clinton said it. Joe Biden said it. Many Republicans said it. It made sense. I mean, Donald Trump himself even indicated that he was not going to accept the election results immediately. He said he would look at the election's results first. So that was one of those main concerns that the Democratic Party had, and it came true. So I don't think that it's wrong to have uh, considered that as a very real possibility. But Donald Trump indicated it, you know, essentially saying that there's no point in having a Republican governor if they are not going to work in your way when it comes down to the most important things. Personally, again, I do not think that Donald Trump actually thought the election was rigged. I think it was just more so for rhetoric, more so for inspiring the crowd for 2022. But then again, that is not the point of this video. And this endorsement, in a sense, which I wouldn't consider to be an endorsement, something that Stacey Abrams should at all campaign on or be happy about. I do think that this is something that actually might end up, if she was to have a successful primary challenger or someone who was going to be a strong primary challenger for the governor's race, maybe this actually would boost their chances. But the point being that many Trump supporters are not going to vote for Stacey Abrams, even if President Trump wants to say that she is the better alternative compared to Brian Kemp. 
At the end of the day, many of them recognize that ultimately she is a Democrat and she will not be voting or moving in their interest in the governor's mansion, that she will not be the one that uh, many of these uh, Republicans would be looking for, for guidance and for leadership across the state. Even though President Trump may be upset with Brian Kemp, these people are also very politically smart. They do understand how electoral politics works and they understand that a Democratic governor could veto things from the Republican legislature or they could have a slightly less Trumpian Republican governor and most of the time, 99% of them probably, will opt for that option. But back to my point. This type of statement was enough that on the 2022 Wikipedia page for the Georgia gubernatorial race, that in the endorsements for the Democrats, that Donald Trump actually showed up for Stacey Abrams. Now, this was changed, and today you will not find this on the Wikipedia page, but for a brief period of time, it was added on. In fact, it went back and forth. Some people said that this should count as an endorsement, saying that Stacey Abrams is preferable to Brian Kemp. And then others argue the primary hasn't occurred on the GOP side, that we don't know if Donald Trump was being serious or if he was saying this as more of a threat towards Brian Kemp, but it doesn't really matter. Brian Kemp is more than likely going to be that Republican nominee unless President Trump comes out, flies out, and campaigns in the state heavily for the Republican uh, challenger. The only real one we can actually see maybe is David Perdue, as Herschel Walker and Doug Collins have decided either to one, run for United States Senate in the sta for the case of Herschel Walker, or just not run for anything entirely at all. Doug Collins actually seemed to be the hand-picked choice by President Trump to move on and replace Brian Kemp in the governor's mansion, but that didn't end up happening. Doug Collins ultimately decided that he was no longer going to be running for office across the state of Georgia, and this prevented Donald Trump from having a hand-picked candidate for the Georgia gubernatorial race, which is why he's turning to resort and last-minute efforts in the state of Georgia. I mean, to go so far as to say that you would consider endorsing a Democrat, endorsing Stacey Abrams over Ryan Kemp is quite fascinating, considering that only one truly aligns with the ideals, and one had been worked with hand-in-hand hand before with the uh, Republican Party, with Donald Trump in specific, and that was Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp was able to utilize his position as Secretary of State to prop him up in the governor's election. He put in a lot of work into that election, but he probably could not have done it without a lot of that vote from the Trump group. I understand that the year may not necessarily have been super favorable for the Trump group across the nation, or really Republicans in general. And of course, there are going to be people who decided to vote for Stacey Abrams after voting for Trump in 2016. But Brian Kemp was able to utilize a lot of what was opened up under the competitive nature of many of these states. I think he was able to utilize a lot of the energy that Donald Trump was able to bring towards the race. Obviously, there are some downsides, and the race probably would not have been as close if this was a Democratic president. But you do have to realize that with Donald Trump, of course, there are negatives, but there also are some pretty high positives, especially when it comes down to some of these more closer races on the primary level. A primary endorsement by Donald Trump can go a very, very long way. But for Stacey Abrams, it doesn't look like she's going to be facing off against any top Democrats. She actually has not received, again, she has not received the endorsement from Donald Trump. This is an old version of the Wikipedia page. So while it is fascinating to take a look at, we can actually take a look at the real one right now, and you will see that there is no longer uh, an endorsement there for anyone, actually, on the Democratic side. When you take a look at the endorsement, it just shows endorsements and nothing else under it. For the Republicans, at least, Vernon Jones has received the endorsement of Michael Flynn, Rudy Giuliani, and other pro-Trump Republicans. Quite interesting to see Michael Flynn and Rudy Giuliani on this list, but I think many of them are trying to jump on to the Trump train. They are trying to uh, make it so they are still resembling and still mimicking Donald Trump's actions and uh, thoughts as it comes down to a number of these individual races. Brian Kemp absolutely would provide the GOP with the best chance of winning, but there's no guarantee that he wins the primary in the first place. If there is this much anti-Brian Kemp sentiment, it is going to be very difficult because for a while it seemed as if the field was going to be cleared, that Brian Kemp was going to for sure win the nomination, but it looks like at this point in time, while he does hold on to 41 or 49% of the vote, Vernon Jones is inching up there, 19%, 29%. Vernon Jones is a former Democrat here who actually ended up uh, switching to the Republican Party, campaigning for Donald Trump, and now is trying to represent him as the Georgia governor. It is very interesting to see the transformation over quite some time, uh, but Vernon Jones is running and getting around a third of the vote in the most recent Trafalgar Group poll in just under a month. A significant improvement in just under a month is nothing that can be scoffed at, nothing that can be treated as if it isn't important, and it absolutely will have some type of major implications for this race in 2022. And I think at the end of the day, this partial endorsement, whatever you want to call it, this 
uh, reluctant endorsement. I don't really care what you call it. And you shouldn't call it a full-on endorsement. There should be some type of caveat to it. There should be some type of description as to what type of endorsement this was because it was not a standard endorsement. But with it, I think that it is just interesting to see that Stacey Abrams is now viewed in a higher manner than Brian Kemp. And it might indicate a much more competitive Republican primary, which would also indicate a weaker Republican Party by the time the general election. It is very rare for incumbents to lose. And if Brian Kemp needs to spend money on this race, if he needs to raise money for this race, these are groups of people that he will not have in the general election. And it'll ultimately be very unfortunate for the Republican Party because then, as Donald Trump says is better than Brian Kemp, Stacey Abrams would become governor of the state of Georgia. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.